Uh, so today I want to cover off the concepts of performance management, why it's necessary to develop a, a really high performance culture, what coaching is, some of the basics of coaching, and then some of the most common underlying causes of underperformance. So performance management is a term that is thrown around a lot these days, and it's mostly seen as a very negative term, and one that strikes fear into the heart of those on the receiving end, the penultimate act before termination of employment, which is a bit like going into the departure lounge prior to getting on a plane, without the excitement of a new destination or the drinks in the bar. But I view the words very differently in the sense that managing performance is something that needs to be done with all staff, even your star performers, to make sure that you're getting the best out of them and that they're engaged, committed and meeting their goals, as well as the firm goals or goals that you've set for them. So this requires ongoing coaching and mentoring of staff and treating people as individuals rather than an amorphous group of people with the same skills, attitude and mindset. And to be honest, a partner who is not, um, is not doing his or her job if they're not coaching staff and having conversations about performance on a regular basis. But in the context of poor performance, performance management is often used as a first resort rather than a last one, where there is perceived underperformance. And the news often comes as a surprise to the employee being told they're not performing. This is the face of someone who finds out that someone's not been happy with their performance for the last nine months. And that's largely because those difficult conversations when performance issues are first noticed haven't been had. So why is managing performance in a proactive way good for the firm? Professional services firms need a high performance culture in order to succeed and thrive in what everyone agrees is a very competitive market. A high performance culture has been shown in many studies uh, to lead to not just increased productivity, which of course means uh, more profit, but reduced risk as well. It's one where everyone involved from the top down work towards a common goal and do their absolute best to contribute to that culture. Excellence is valued and rewarded. People in organisations with a high performance culture are passionate about doing a great job. They're passionate about the organisation, its clients, and they focus on growth and they want to succeed. Create, creating and maintaining that kind of culture is challenging, but it can be done with good leadership, particularly a lack of fear or discomfort around having difficult conversations with staff, and also a desire to give regular developmental feedback. Performance management in the literal sense of the word, not the often used disciplinary one, must become an everyday part of a high performance culture, and too often performance management is done sporadically or not at all. Your talent is a core asset of the firm, so giving regular positive feedback to those meeting the standard expected to lift their level of engagement and stretch and challenge them, at the same time as having difficult conversations with underperformers, um, even small problems, is essential. A high performance culture is not one that avoids, blames, explains away or glosses over problems hoping they're going to go away. It's a bit like being married in some ways. Uh, but it does require fairness and respect, and that means not talking to other people about the problems you're having with that staff member instead of talking to the staff member themselves. Not avoiding contact with the employee or favouring another employee to, and avoiding giving work to the underperformer, which, um, as we all know, will guarantee that they don't improve. So it doesn't happen by accident. It requires all supervisors to spend time with their staff and time spent developing staff is never wasted. And in the end, it does actually make your job easier. And certainly compared to the time spent on performance management, if it's used as a last resort, termination, recruitment, selection, induction, getting a new person up to speed, it's very minor by comparison. For an employee to perform better, they need to know there are things you want them to do differently and you need to explain what those things are and then provide them with the appropriate coaching support to assist them to make it happen before the problem becomes so big that formal performance management is necessary. 